That's one of you. Good evening to the rest of you as well. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about asset protection secrets this evening, so um, shouldn't be a surprise. But you're all here to profit from property, yes? yes. yes. Magnificent. So you all you know that there's uh, things like rent to rent. Anyone doing that? Rent to rent in the room? Yeah? Anyone else? No? Uh, HMOs? A few people doing those as well. Service accommodation. There's uh, sourcing, of course. I didn't see any sources in the room, actually. You're doing sourcing? Planning game? Yeah, okay. Flips. Yes, you were doing two or three things. Title splitting. Yeah? And, of course, commercial to residential. I think that one's going to run and run because uh, there are fewer people working in offices, so there's more and more offices, uh, more and more office space available. Um, so if you've got the education, you've got the money to do that. That's going to be a good one. It's going to run and run. Okay, but uh, who am I and why should you care? My name's John Ireland from Legacy Wills and we are estate planners. We are not instruction takers and I'm going to tell you what the difference is in a moment. I spent 30 years as an independent financial advisor and we as financial advisors, when I was one, were legally obliged to ask our clients, have you got a will? And most of my clients were saying, no, I must get around to it. So uh, I started taking will instructions via the uh, Society of uh, um, Will Writers and uh, got all my accreditation through them and my indemnity insurances, etc., etc. I now work with a firm of solicitors in the Midlands who are members of an organisation called STEP, which is the Society of Trusts and Estate Practitioners, which doesn't mean much to you guys, but that's the top of the tree for estate planning qualifications. And we use wills, trusts and lasting powers of attorney to help our clients protect their assets. Now, will writers, in general, will just take your instructions. They won't give you any help. You'll pitch up at a solicitor's or a will writer's and they'll just take your instructions. Mainly it's a lost leader for lots of uh, solicitor's firms. They don't make a lot of money from uh, acting uh, as your will writer. They'll make money when you die by being your executor. Okay, um, what we do, given my financial services background, is review our clients' circumstances. I want to find out what our clients are looking to achieve. I want to find out all about their assets. And it's only then that I can offer some solutions to protect those assets. So my mission this evening is for you all to leave here with lots more knowledge about how to protect your assets. But it is going to be an interactive presentation, okay? And uh, I ask the questions, but you get the prizes. That a big? Ooh. Well, look, I did drive around Norwich for three hours, and I couldn't find any Ferrero Rocher, but I got these. I got them quite cheap. I got them quite cheap. They're almost in date. You should be all right. And I got them from Waitrose, so they should taste better. Is that all right? So the interactive presentation bit. Oh, by the way, anyone here got a will? Put your hands up if you haven't got if you've got a will. Magnificent. Keep your hands up if you've got a will and a trust. Mm. I I had to borrow this off Chris. Because if you haven't got a will, you might as well be doing that. You know, it's ridiculous. Go and sellotape. Yeah? Great. <laughs> Take that to the bar. You're buying the drinks. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you some questions now. I'm going to put some people on the screen. If you know who they are, what I'd like you to do is stand on your seat and tell me who they are. You don't have to. But stick your hand up and I'll throw a chocolate at you. First person. Yeah, fairly good? Flipping egg. Thank you. No, not you. Dogs don't eat chocolate. Chocolates are not good for dogs, didn't they tell you? Right, you ready? Two of you, three of you, here we go. Who's this? Hands up. Good man. Robert Nestor Marley. Very busy bloke, making albums, touring all over the world, and fathering children. 13 kids he had when he, when he died, okay? No TV in Jamaica apparently at that time. So 13 kids and uh, yeah, worth a lot of money. It took 30 years to wind up his estate. Do you think the lawyers did that for nothing? Don't think so. Who's that? Who said that? Oh. You? Bong! Oh, whoever. Abraham Lincoln, President of the United States. Very, very bright bloke. Lawyer. 
Bright bloke, President of the United States, don't always go together, do they? Anyway, he died. He was assassinated by a guy called John Wilkes Booth. No will. And he was a lawyer. Oh, dear. Who's that? Hands up. Good man. Oh, sorry. Don't let your dog get it. Martin Luther King, yes, uh, assassinated. Um, the family allegedly are still fighting over his Bible now. Personal asset. Who's that? Who? Who's that? Anyone know? Anyone read? Nick Ross. Nick Ross? Specsavers. Specsavers tomorrow. All right, yeah. No, that is Stig Larsson. Who's Stig Larsson? That will do me. Man with the dragon tattoo. Even though it was a girl with the dragon tattoo. Catch. Yes. Girl with the dragon tattoo. He, ha he wrote all the books in, the, in, the, um, in that series. Girl with the dragon tattoo, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and produced, I think, just something to do with the films. Died. No will. Living with his partner. Weren't married. Family walked in, took all the film rights, all of the book rights, and left her with just the flat. She's still fighting them in court now. Who's that? Art lovers in the room. Hands up. Yes. Pablo Picasso. Uh, kids all over the place, loads of money, uh, no will. Big confusion, lots of money. Who's that? Who said trigger? Some say trigger. Good man. Trigger. I mean, trigger died. What did Del Boy say? No will. No will. Are you plonker? Good man. Who's that? Who said Prince? Hey! The do, if the dog gets that, it will poison the dog. Right. Prince, why didn't he have a will? Keep changing his name. Who's that? Who said Amy Winehouse? Yay. Amy Winehouse, yes. Uh, she had a will. Forgot to sign it. So her parents got it. Oh dear. Who's that? Hands up. <laughs> Michael Jackson, famous for hanging babies out of hotel windows, and of course he made some albums. <laughs> Who's that? Anyone? Anyone? Come on, he's coming. Who is that? I've got it in Braille. I've got it in Braille. You used to make aeroplanes. Go on. Howard? Yes. yes. No, you can't have the chocolate. Howard Hughes, wealthiest man on the planet when he dies, worth in today's money $11 billion. No will. Who's that? Jimi Hendrix. You've had the chocolate. He says, who had chocolate? Go on, you had the chocolate. James Marshall Hendrix. No will. Who's that? Rick Mail. Who said Rick Mail? Shut up. Rick Mail. Right. Why is Rick Mail on there? Because. According to this august body of fantastic news, the Daily Mirror, we all know the difference between the Mirror and the Beano, don't we? Uh -huh. About 10 pence. He was worth a staggering 1.2 million quid when he died with no will. Okay, now, this is an important fact for you to all remember. There is no inheritance tax between husband and wife, okay, or civil partners. But dying without a will means you're governed by the laws of intestacy. You're tired. Flip your neck. Um, at that time, the spouse got the first £250,000 and half the rest. That's now been increased to uh, 322000 So, let's look at the consequences of Mr. Mayo's death without a will. It's worth £1.2 million. The uh, first 250 goes to his spouse. is 950 to be divided between her and the kids. All right? She gets 250 plus 475. Children got the other 475,000. No inheritance tax between spouses, right? But the children's inheritance of 475 minus his nil rate band. Everyone know what the nil rate band is? Yeah, you can own assets up to 325,000 pounds currently without having to pay inheritance tax when you die, okay? But you take one from the other, it gives you a taxable estate of £150,000. Now, tax at 40%, that meant a tax bill of 60,000 quid. 
just because he didn't get a will. Oh dear. Obviously, with a will in place, there would be no tax to pay. So I just wondering if the family's finding as amusing as it used to. But there we go. There's two things certain in life, aren't there? Death and taxes, yeah? What is it that we all know? A date of birth, yeah? What is it you don't know? When you're going to die. Correct. And I can attest to that, because about three years ago, I was with some friends. I'd always kept fairly fit, been running most of my life doing martial arts, all sorts of stuff like that, and I started getting some pains here. So uh, I stopped the running for a couple of weeks. Some friends came down. Uh, we, I live a fairly healthy life, and I was drinking, um, sorry, I was having one of my five-a-day fruits, it happened to be in a glass, and it was quite nice. It was a Merlot, I think. But there we go. And um, start, started feeling a bit unwell, so I said to my wife, listen, I'm going to go to bed. I'm not feeling particularly brilliant. She said, okay. Following morning, she who must be obeyed said, I think you should see the doctor. So she took me straight to the hospital. Well, they wired me up to a screen, probably about half the size of that, and they said, Mr. Ireland, see those three things there? Yeah, they're all blocked. I said, oh, what does that mean? I said, well, you're going for a, uh, an operation. Okay, stents. Now, for those of you who don't know, stents go in your arteries, open them, allows the blood to flow. No, nope, you're going for a triple bypass. So I had a triple bypass. Um, the following day, uh, uh, when I woke up, the doctor was beside me and he said, uh, Mr. Ireland, he said, I've got some bad news. Ah. He said, you, uh, one of them hasn't taken, so we're going to have to do it all over again. So they did do it all over again. He said, oh, and by the way, he said, if you hadn't come in yesterday, you'd have been dead in two weeks. Death, you don't know when it's coming, guys. 